These are some European products. They use in the exchange of human beings. Slavery is a painful past that shapes the future of Africa. Sometimes going back to this history strengthens the future of our great nation, our continent, Africa. Now, let's continue on the video. Don't go anywhere, and I would like to get your feedback in the comment section. In Nigeria, then, this is the money they use in Nigeria, then. The cowries. The cowries. So the white people cannot use our own money. And that's why they brought all these items they use in the exchange of human beings. In Nigeria, then, if value of an umbrella has 40 slaves, before you can collect one umbrella from a white man, you will need to bring 40 FT men. And we, yes, and we still have one of the umbrella in our museum up to date. A bottle of gin, ten slaves. A bottle of gin, ten slaves. And there's a man who also brought his wife and daughter to have a bottle of gin. Then, so sorry, the big sorry, I want to get A man brought his wife, wife and, daughter. and daughter. A black man yeah. brought his wife and daughter to yes. the Seriki because he wants to drink a gin. Oh. So the big can of gun, hundred slaves. Why the small can of gun 40 slaves? The big can of gun is 100. Why the small one 40 yeah, slaves? Please. What do they use the can of gun for? They use it to wage war within their cell in order for them to get more slaves so that they can sell to the white man. K2 and the bead and the brass dish are the items given to Seriki by the Brazilians as a gift. Miro doesn't have a specific number. It depends how you can bargain with the white man. There has been uncertainty, many unanswered questions concerning what truly really happened during the slave era. If what we've read, what we've seen, what we've heard about slavery, if they truly happened, or if it happened, is it really what they are telling us that truly happened? Well, me, I'm curious, everybody is curious. I made a visit on one of the slave museums, known as the Slave Barracoon, here at Balagri, to unveil some of the mysteries that happened during the slave era, while interacting with them to find out more answers. And you can also take part in this discussion. This is the foundation of the nation we have today take it or not this is the last child of seriki the last child he was six when his father died he was born in 1913 and his father passed away in 1919 oh. and he also passed away in 1987 this is my own grandfather uh, since you are the descendant of uh, um seriki about, 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 about last time i came here people are arguing that these stories are they're not true like it's more like a story that the europeans left for us, the, 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 the generation to read. How true are uh, all, all the stories? It's not that they are trying to blackmail our forefather. That is what really happened then. Because we are the one that sold ourselves into slavery. You know, the white people cannot come to Africa without the concept of some people. Is it possible for a white man to just come to Nigeria and pick you as a slave now? Mm -hmm. No, without the intervention of some people. They cannot do it. They penetrate through some leaders. So, and all the story I'm telling you, there is a document for it. There is a document for it. Whatever okay. anything I'm saying, there is a document for it. After a brief discussion, we went inside where used to be a slave cell, where they store 40 human beings. Right there, they have documents and things prove as evidence that these things truly took place here. This is the man we are talking about, and this is how the man is normally dressed as a Seriki then. These are the member of Council of Seriki then. The umbrella you are looking at in that picture, and this is the same umbrella here. And this is one of the umbrella they brought in the exchange of human beings. A value of this 40 human beings. Like 40 human beings for what this umbrella? And this umbrella now is more than 200 years old. So these are some chain they use on the slaves. And this chain is called heavy chain. The heavy chain is meant for the stubborn slaves. So why this one is called anchor charcoal? The anchor charcoal is meant for two people. Okay. One here and one, one in another process leg. And this is where they will padlock it, yeah. so I do not run away while working on the farm. The children also have their own chain, and this small chain is meant for the children. Once the family is being captured, they will not send the children along with their parents. The children will serve as a bonus to the person that brought their parents. And once they grow, they will send them to another country, so that they will not see their parents anymore. And that's why when they abolish the slave trade, most of the slaves cannot trace their roots. This object is called iron drilling bit. Iron drilling bit, they use it to write their name at the back of their slaves. 
in order for them to identify their slaves. Anytime they want to use it, it will be very, very odd. So during that period, most of the slaves died because they cannot bear the pains. And this place you are now is called a waiting cell. 40 people are stored in this inner room. It's 40 yes. only. Can I go inside? We are still going. Okay. So once the 40 people are in the room, there is a door here before they lock up the door. They use three months to four months before they can leave this room. Inside this room, this is where the wee wee and this is where the poo poo. You can imagine how this place will be messed up then. So come in. So 40 people are stored in this inner room. 40 months like this? Yes. This is where the wee wee and this is where the poo poo. And there is only ventilation they have in the room. And that's, more and that's why most of the slaves die because of the heat and the odor. This is the one of the bottle of gin they brought then. The yes. Yes. I asked Meda Vienna, 1873, was written on the bottle, a brass dish cup and more cup given to the man by the Brazilians as a gift. These are some bowls they use in the exchange of human beings. A van of one bowl, 10 slaves. No matter how big it is, and no matter how small it is, anybody that had a five ball, we need to bring 50 slaves. Going through the slave cell, now a museum, we see lyrics and photographs showing the event that took place during the slave era, and some documents written by the original owner of the slave cell, known as Williams Abbas. Note, there are 40 slave cells in this particular compound. This is just one out of the 40. See the same window, same definition. So this is how they hang men, and this is how they hang women. We have the statues outside because they have sexual intercourse together, which is not like slavery with them. So once they are caught, and this is the kind of punishment given to them, and this is how they hang till they die. Wow. It's so sad. This is one of the iron ruby sheets they use in this building. It's zinc they use in this building. You can see how thick it is. You can use it to compare the one they are producing now. So these are the daughters and sons of Seriki. Seriki has five wives and also have 11 children. Legal tender and promise to note written by Seriki then. So the moment they leave this compound, they are taking them to point of no return. And the point of no return is across the lagoon. Yeah. Whoever that crossed to the other side, then they are not yeah. coming back again. And that's why they call the place the point of no return. Wow. But now it's called point of return. Because After we... After here, we went through to see where the owner of this slave cell, Williams Abbas, was buried. But before then, let's even know who is this Williams Abbas. And this is a man that owns the compound. This man is called Seriki Williams Abbas. Wow. His, his birth name was Ifara Emileko. So how come Ifara Emileko now be Seriki Williams Abbas? So this man, he was captured at the age of six in a town called Jogawile, Enogu State. And then once the slave is being captured, they are no longer to be bearing their own name. They bear their master's name or whatever any name their master chose to give to them. So the first person that owes him as a slave is Abbas. Okay. Abbas came from Idaume. Idaume today is in Benin Republic. So he took him down there. He used him as a domestic slave. We have two types of slave. We have this the domestic slave and the field slave. The domestic slave are the slaves that work in their master's house, while the field slave are the ones that work in the farm plantation. So this man happened to be a domestic slave. So Abbas later on resold him to a white man called Williams. It was Mr. Williams that took this man down to Brazil and also used him as a domestic slave. So when he was in Brazil, Williams sent him to school. He taught him how to read and write, and later on, he called the man, if you want me to release you, you are going to work for me. And the man told his master, whatever anything you want me to do, I'm ready to do it for you. So that is how Williams brought him back to Nigeria. And when he came, he first settled down at Lagos Island. So as I'm talking to you now, this man has so many houses in Lagos Island. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes. Oh. So from Lagos Island, he proceeded to Badagui. Yes. And when he came to Badagui, he was given a title called Seriki because he was the one that brought Islam to Badagui. And that's why they gave him a title called Seriki Musulumi of Badagui. And up to date, 
The family of the man still remain the same Kimo Sumo Badagui up to date. Out of curiosity, I asked the question, how do you guys run and maintain this place? The maintainers, the money, the tourists or the visitors pay yeah. are the money we are using to maintain the heritage. Nothing was done to upgrade this compound ever since it was proclaimed as a national monument. monument yeah. You understand? And the original structure, you can see the bricks. You can see the bricks. Yeah. And this is the original. All these bricks yeah. were imported from England in Liverpool. Because, because it was Mr. Williams. Discussing the African slavery is way lower than we cover in this video. There's a lot to the story. But the moral lesson I am taking out of the story as a young Nigerian or as a young African is that slavery never left. Although they abolished slavery, but the foundation to slavery, which is greed and selfishness, never left. If we are to be honest, we can all agree that the seed of this slavery, which is selfishness, greediness, wickedness and all of that are still finding their way in and out of our society today and this is why we should always go back to the roots where the foundation of our dear nation nigeria and every other part of african nations have been built i remember your boy OZ. i would love to get your own opinion what do you learn from the slavery what does the slavery teach you as a young african and i will also appreciate your questions because I will always visit this place to give them your question you ask, hoping to get um, feedback from them. So let us know your question in the comment section. Bear in mind that we are learning here. And in the subsequent videos, I'll also bring you another video on this particular place. This, this place plays a huge role. Of and course. it should be in the map. So, like I said, my goal on this video is to actually create awareness. You get also call the attention of people to this place. They should visit. Right? Of course. So if people should visit, like what are the services as they should expect from this place? Actually, when they come around... So, sorry, how, organi how organized are you guys? We are well organized here. Okay. We are well organized. Like now, when they come around, we can take them to all the museums we have in Badagui. Like, like all the museums, like, like where... There's a slave cell where the slave was stored. Okay. We also have the Mobi slave relics. Okay. The first story building in Nigeria. Okay. But I agree, slave markets okay. and the heritage museum. And the last one is point of no return. Because any moment the slave leave this compound, they are taking any slave that leave this compound, they are taking them to point of no return. And once they cross to the other side of the lagoon outside, they are not coming back Hello. again. And that's why they call the place the point of no return. In the future updates, and I, think I will show you what other museums here yeah, look like in Badagri. To see that, absolutely. please ensure you subscribe to the channel. Please stay tuned. And stay safe. I remember your boy again, OZ. One love. In this, at this point, I will recommend you follow the one showing nest on your screen. One love, guys.